calcium may dissolve kidney stones? Let's talk about that. Jill has been at this for nearly 30 years now, preventing kidney stones for thousands and thousands of patients. And today we're talking about calcium. We're talking about dissolving kidney stones, calcium. What, what are we actually talking about here? Well, you know, I get all kinds of crazy questions in my line of work. And so there's some people out there that actually think that their doctor told them to do something with calcium because it's gonna help dissolve stones instead of lessen stone risk. So, you know, are they gonna dissolve kidney stones? Well, no. Are they gonna help prevent kidney stones? Yes. Now you could say, Jill, my stone is calcium based. You could also say this, Jill, I have too much calcium in my urine. Why would I wanna get more calcium? This is also a very common question. For those of you who have high urine calcium and you're only gonna know that you have that because you have done a urine collection, a 24 hour urine collection. The whole reason I beg you guys to get your doctor to order that. And if your doctor says no, find another doctor that will order it. I have a blog post at kidneystonediet.com on the exact test. This is what it's titled. What test exactly do I need for a 24 hour urine collection, something like that. You need to get that test done because many of you are being told that you're a kidney stone former, but that you're just always going to be, but that's because no one's tested your urine and they don't know that you have high urine calcium. And that's one of the biggest reasons people are making kidney stones. So it really kills me that doctors don't order these tests. And I think a lot of doctors don't order them because they don't know what to do with them when they come back. But see, so you have me. So all day long, I'm helping people understand their urine collections so they can have better doctor office visits and, and talk to their doctor about it, educated. So the whole calcium thing. The reason you need enough calcium, and this is 1,000 milligrams for women and men and 1,200 milligrams of calcium per day for postmenopausal women. Do not go over those goals. You need that much because you have bones and you need to make sure they stay strong. I'll be 62 in a few weeks and I wanna get out of my chair in a few years. So it's very important to me to be able to keep my strength because as you get older, it flies away if you don't take care of it. So calcium is important for bone health. And then in kidney stones, what it does is it lowers urine oxalate. So when you have calcium paired along with something that's higher in oxalate, like a sweet potato, instead of all that oxalate absorbing into your body, the oxalate from the sweet potato, if you have it with a non-dairy milk or a milk, some calcium-based product, when you have it with the higher oxalate product, at the same time, not two hours later, at the same time, then oxalate and calcium go through general metabolism, they meet each other in the small intestine, they join, they leave through the stool. If there's no calcium there, because most of you, if any of you, get enough calcium every day, and you certainly are impairing it with, you know, maybe spinach or whatever, because you don't know anything about this yet, you know, it's very easy to, you have the oxalate food, like a spinach salad, of course you didn't have calcium, so spinach cannot leave through the school stool, the oxalate, the oxalate, gets reabsorbed back into your blood. I think I kind of said that right, whatever. I think I did. So the sweet potato breaks down. We have some oxalate as a waste product. It goes through the regular general metabolism process. It gets to your intestine. It's looking for calcium, but you didn't have any calcium. So now the small intestine is reabsorbing that oxalate. And that's how you get higher oxalate levels. That's a Jill explanation, which tends to be crude, but everybody can understand it, okay? Of course, for real scientific explanations, you guys can go to my mentor site, Fred Co. that's C-O-E, and his website is kidneystone.uchicago.edu. All the science lives there. I'm the interpreter of that science, okay? Yeah, and just to uh, be aware, it is science heavy. It is, it is <laughs> like you have fun. to love uh, that degree because Fred is... A scientist. A, a scientist, a researcher for years in yes. this topic. So he's speaking in that uh, 
in that vein. But it's, I mean, it's super helpful when you want to dive very deep, but just be warned. <laughs> yes, he's a nephrologist and he's actually in a couple weeks. He's, it's, it starts with an F. I forget how you say this because it's in a different language, but he is being honored. He's 88 years old. He is being honored and there's hundreds of people coming from all over the country to honor him for his work that he has done as a nephrologist and researcher for all these decades in, in kidney stone. So I'm going to see a lot of my doctor friends because most, a lot, a lot of my uh, business comes from doctor referrals because they don't, have, you know, they're not reading these urine collections the way I will. Or, and talk about diet is the real thing, right? So that's where I come in. But yeah, so he's being honored. It's going to be, it's going to be really special. It really is. So I'm really looking forward to that. And he earns it. That man, he's 88. He works seven days a week. Once in a while, his wife makes him take a day off, but his he is passionate about what he does. What are we talking about, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so just with calcium. Oh, yeah, calcium. calcium. <laughs> yeah, the importance. Is, calcium. Yeah, we're yes. not talking as much about dissolving with kidney mm -hmm. stones, but preventing. We are removing mm -hmm. the oxalate from the urine with calcium, with getting enough calcium, not too much and not too little. Right. And so, so for you guys that have high urine calcium, you could be very confused as to why you need more. Well, a lot of you, because you're not following the kidney stone diet goals, because you didn't know about them yet, you were making your stone, eating high salt, eating high sugar stuff, eating too much uh, meat products. And what happens is uh, the three goals out of the six of the kidney stone diet, the salt and the added sugar and the meat protein are all there. They are in place to help lower urine calcium. Because when you eat too much sugar, added salt and meat, what happens is that is pulling calcium from your bone and dumping it, dumping it into your urine. So you guys will have too much calcium in your urine and along with maybe you're not drinking enough and you're not peeing enough, so all these calcium crystals are sitting in there. Calcium's looking for oxalate, phosphate's looking for calcium, and all these little crystals find each other like magnets and form stones. So a lot of you will have something that's called, it's known simply as IH, but it stands for idiopathic hypercalcuria, which is a big fancy word that means Bobby has too much calcium in his urine, hypercalcuria, and idiopathic means there's not a medical reason for this. We've ruled out diet. Bobby's doing the diet. We've ruled out other medical conditions, parathyroid issues, vitamin D deficiency, all these things, and this patient still has high urine calcium. At that time, it is diagnosed as IH. We have no medical reason for it slap on a diuretic and that's when Bobby will go on a diuretic and that diuretic will help save calcium. It will be, it will keep calcium from being thrown into the urine like that. So you always try diet first. If the diet isn't working by itself, lots of times this is genetic. It happens in families. This is why people say everybody in my family has it. If they all did a urine collection, many of them or most of them would also have high urine calcium. So don't you dare let a healthcare professional say, oh, you're just a stonemaker and you haven't done a urine collection in my almost 30 years. I've never seen just somebody who's a stonemaker. I've looked at thousands of urine collections and me, I, I get more passionate about this because I'm a patient with all my bowel issues and cancer stuff. And I'm like, don't ever say things to me. That's going to make me give up hope. That just drives me nuts because there are, there is stuff that you can do. And plus the kidney stone diet is just a healthier diet. So you want calcium because you want, forget about kidney stones. You want calcium because you've got to feed your skeleton and you can get non-dairy calcium sources you don't have to use dairy anymore okay you can lower your salt and lowering added sugar everybody should be doing that for heart and kidney help okay getting enough fluids well that's the best moving around lower oxalate all of it all of it will be on the healthier side for you in general can't tell you how many of my patients have gone off their metformin. They don't take their they don't take their blood pressure medications anymore simply because 
they got a kidney stone that scared the hell out of them. And then they're like, whatever you say, Jill, I'm doing. Boom, boom, boom. The medicines disappear. Why? Because of me? No, because Bobby's working his butt off now. And now he doesn't make new stones. And also, he doesn't have high blood pressure. And he feels better than he ever has. I, I know. I'm boring myself. I'm sorry. No, no, no. But I'm, I'm just, just saying. Yeah, on that too, it's not. Jill has not said, stop taking this. This is the doctor who would have prescribed this would then discover that the person no longer needs that medication. Yes, thank you, Jeff. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying get off your... When you, when you follow the kidney stone diet, most of you, you'll go back to the doctor's office, he'll take your blood pressure, he's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? My God, your blood pressure has never been better. I don't even think you need the meds. And they'll start weaning them off the blood pressure medications to make sure that they don't need them. And then they get off of them. So thank you for bringing... I'm not telling you to get off meds, people. No, thank never. you, Jeff. God bless. Uh, never, ever. You will listen to your doctor's advice. But what I'm saying is the nice side effect of paying attention to what you put in your mouth will leave you with a heck of a lot. You see these pills? It, instead of going from the big pill, I'm looking at pill boxes for those listening on Spotify or other places. You get rid of your pill boxes, folks. I have it because I need vitamin D and B12. Otherwise, I don't take any pills up Synthroid. But, so, that's what I'm talking about, folks. You need calcium. It will help lower your risk for kidney stones because it will lower urine oxalate. And you need it because you have a skeleton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think okay. that is a perfect uh, overview. And if you want to dive deep into everything kidney stone diet related, all the goals, the sodium, the uh, sugars, the meat protein, all of the things that you need to consider, go to kidneystonediet.com and you can find all of that information right there. And even if you want to get a weekly email from Jill, absolutely mm -hmm. free, right in your inbox, just drop your email address there on the homepage and you'll hear from Jill every week. So, And we uh, give a lot of special deals only to the newsletter folks. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like 40,000 people on that newsletter. Yeah, that brings everyone, it brings you into the community of like-minded people who are all in pursuit of the same thing. And that's to yes. prevent future stones. So yes. with that, I think we'll wrap and we'll see you next week. Have a good week, everybody.